This is a reading from Richard Abbott's book In a Milk and Honeyed Land, a historical novel set around 1200 BC in the highlands of Canaan. The setting is a small town called Kephrath, part of an Egyptian province, but sufficiently remote and poor that the Egyptians take little interest in day-to-day activities. This section comes from quite early in the book. To Mariel, at this time a young man whose future is unclear, is the main character. Both of his brothers have just been killed in a skirmish with another village, and De Mario is about to take part in their funeral. Other main people here are his mother Yerosheth, his sister Sosanath, and the priest Saniyahu. This is also the time when he begins to form his relationship with his childhood friend Katira. After a long time there came complete silence, and he looked up at the drape, wondering what was happening. Then Yerosheth's voice came again, raised high, wailing for the dead, and the others joined her in turn, woman after woman. De Mario felt himself shake, transfixed to the spot with tears in his eyes, as the sound slowly swelled and then faded as they left the house. He sat there for a few moments, letting the death moment build in his mind as the keening had done. Then he got up, straightened his clothes, and left the house, walking blindly up to the high place. He went by the shortest route, past silent household doors, each draped with their own garlands of leaf or flower. He was aware of the sound of women mourning across the west of the village, and knew the men would be gathering to the east. He came into the open space above the last house, seeing Saniyahu there alone with the bodies. He had cleaned the wounds, arranged the limbs in the proper way, and dressed both boys in white tunics, tied with a rope belt. They lay across one of the stones, stretched out like a sacrifice, each on a wicker bier. There was no time now, and de Mariel stood where the older man told him, to the left of the bodies, just behind the seer, looking towards the sacred north. The sound of the women grew closer from his left, and he knew without looking that Yerosheth and Sosanath would be leading the rest. To his right, the men approached in a silent group. He tried to see if Shamal was there out of the corners of his eyes, not wanting to turn his head, knowing that to do that he would have to look over the stone with the bodies. He did not trust himself to do that, without being overcome with emotion. The women's wailing seemed to go on for ever, treading endlessly up the rising ground towards him. Then it stopped, and there was only the sound of the day breeze whispering in smock and tunic. He heard the priest ask where the bodies were to be laid, and heard Yerosheth step forward and offer the chamber of her ancestors, and the little flat cake she had made that morning. He heard him accept the place, and then ask what gifts were to be sent on with them. He saw Sosanath, her face pinched tight, their spinning top beside them for their childhood. He saw Danil step forward with a short knife for each of them for their manhood, which had never been, and place it on their chests, tucking it under the loose cords they wore for belts. He saw Shomar put a nail and trowel between them for their place in the community. Saniyahu nodded and stepped back, and it was time for Demariel to sing. He stepped up to the two bodies, his eyes fixed in the north, watching the faraway cloud shapes like temples or palaces piled on the hilltops, with roofs open wide to the sight of the endless sun, and he sang as he bloomed in the sun, in the wind, in the sight of all those who were living and singing on high. The words Saniyahu had taught him all poured from his mouth just like showers in the spring or like streams in the desert, his word and his song springing out from his soul, washing over the village and filling the high place, poised there between sky and earth. He forgot the people standing there listening, he forgot the two bodies at his feet, and felt something opening inside him, as though he was being swept along on the current of a song that had started long before him, melody and poetry that flowed around the homes of mortals and gods to inspire them all. It was him, then, him who stood for the whole community, who stood between the living and the dead and sang to both, and he felt all their eyes on him as he did so. He finished, the moment passed, and after all that he was still to Mariel, and he had still lost both his brothers in a single day. He stepped back again, feeling Saniyahu's hand firm on his shoulder, and looked around. Shomal was a face in the crowd of men looking somewhere into the valley. Yerosheth was kneeling in front of the other women, looking at nothing but the bodies, with Sosanath's hand in hers. 
but Katira had her eyes full of the day's brightness as she looked back at him, and Demario felt a different kind of future stirring in him as she kept his eyes for a long moment until the deeper voice of the seer came across them all, releasing the boys to go on to their ancestors and calling on the dead who had gone before to accept them.